So properties of radicals basically have the exact same properties as our exponents. First thing I want to do is talk about what a radical is. If a equals b to the n, that's our exponent property, then b is the nth root of a. Okay, and the way we indicate that, b is equal to the nth root of a, where n is an integer not equal to 0. Um, actually, we're going to, for our purposes, n is going to be a natural number. So, reminder, our natural numbers are 1, 2, 3, um, and we're going to call it a natural number greater than 1. So, for example, the roots I can have are a second root, which is called a square root. A 3 here would be called a cube root. And then anything after that, we would call the nth root. For example, a 7 would be called the seventh root. If it's a square root, we don't need the number on the top. We could just write it with a, square, with a root symbol. N is called the index of that. The part, okay, this is the radical. And the part that's underneath the radical is called the radicand. So if I have something that's written in exponential notation, I can turn around and write it in as radical notation. That's the first thing that you need to get out of this, is something that's written in exponential notation can be written in radical notation. So now to go over the properties. And again, I have the same basic properties that I have with exponents. Okay. First thing I want to talk about is this property. If I take the nth root of something raised to a power, I can actually just take the nth root of that something and then raise it to that power. Okay. If I have an nth root of a product of two things, that is the same thing as taking the nth root of the product. Notice that these roots have to be identical in order for that property to hold. Similarly with quotients, I can just take the nth root of the quotient. If I take a root of a root, taking the nth root of the nth root of a, that is just going to take the product of the two roots, and that would give me my new index. The nth root of something raised um, to a power that's the same as the index is just that something. So squaring the square root of something gives me back to my original number. The next property we have to be careful with. 
the nth root of something raised to a power is the absolute value of that something if n is even, and it is equal to that something if n is odd. So the square root of something squared is the absolute value of that something. The cube root of something cubed is that something that was cubed. Okay. Want to talk about principal roots. For example, if you have the square root of 25 that um, is provided for you, the principal root has the same sign as what is underneath the radical. Okay, so the principal root for this one would be 5. Notice the square root of 25. If I say x squared is equal to 25, and you want to take, you want to change this to root notation, you need to remember that even roots. I'm going to have two answers. So if you're the one that's taking the root, you need to remember that you're going to have more than one answer. If they have it written down and they're asking you to evaluate it, you just need to provide the principal root. Okay? And the principal root has the same sign as what is underneath the radical or the radicand. For example, the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. And cube root of 8 is 2. Same sign as what's under what's the radicand is. So if they provide it for you, you're going to give me a single answer. If you're the one that's taking the root, you're going to provide me all of the answers that are associated with it. So that's it for the properties of radicals. Um, there will be another video with some example problems that is optional for you. If you think you can do it without the video, then go ahead and do the work.